Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Uh, first of all, thank you so much, cousin, for giving me a shout out. I so appreciate it. Um, you doubled my subscribers. Thank you. That's very nice. Um, I, you know, when people talk to you the first time when you finally start a channel and someone that you've watched for a long time comments or notices you, it's like such <laughs> like they're such rock stars and you can't believe you just got singled out of the audience you know very cool thank you that was so nice and so sweet so thank you very much um today I just want to do a little current reads for all of my nonfiction. I like to make lists and then not do the things on the list or read the books on the list as it may be so when nonfiction November came around this was the first time that I had really heard about it. I started my channel um, almost exactly two months ago. So the month was just over half over and I thought, yeah, I can totally cram stuff in. And I did get a couple in, but I could do better. So um, I, I'm after the game is what this little ramble is about. I'm usually like, I, I make the list and I make the intention to join in some readathon or read along or theme or whatever. It happens, I read a little bit of it, and then like one to two months to three months afterwards, I read a whole bunch more of the thing I was supposed to do earlier. Hi, that's me. So, <laughs> um, with that being said, I'll get started going over some of this stuff. So, first up is Last Christmas. This is only sold in the UK. This is a little essay collection. Um, I think Crisis is the ones are the ones who put it out. Quirkus is the publisher. Um, but it's little essays about like from famous people and non famous people about Christmas times, their traditions, um, homelessness, giving, faith, love, all that stuff. It's really, really nice. And I am glad I'm dragging this out a little bit. Um, just to help keep that nice Christmas feeling through the season and passed into it now that January is here. It's such a long slog, at least here in Wisconsin. It's a really long slog of winter and slush and things until May, April, if we're lucky, before you start to see grass more regularly and not just heaping piles of snow, <laughs> dirty snow everywhere. But um, so this has been really nice to just pick up and read a few and um, get to know some of my favorite actors and stuff a little bit better too. That's a little side bonus. So yeah last Christmas. Um, next up is Four Queens by Nancy Goldstone. So this is about four sisters from the, it's Provence, but I don't know if it is a, their father was a count. What does that make that then? Not a principality. Mm, not sure. Anyways, um, this is set in the now early to mid 1200s in France and it's about these four sisters who were all beautiful and all intelligent and they all married into um, these large kingdoms uh, France France um, England I think that was Henry the second Louis the ninth mm, ooh the third daughter Sancha just got married recently I don't remember who she married anyways Rambly. So I am not sure about this book. I started this a few years ago. I've owned this book for I think 11 years now. So timely as ever. That's me. And I got a little confused. So purportedly, this is about each of these queens lives, their family, their you know, how they're raised growing up and everything and then how they met and married or were pawned off to um, their husbands for you know whatever kind of political purposes and um, how they influence things what their lives were like all, you know all that stuff that's what it sounds like that's what it should be but this I have to be honest this is way more of a sausage fest than it needs to be and I understand that the records for this time period and just in general for women not great because you know we're not really people haven't been before so I get I get that and I get that you have to base these women's movements on what their husbands were doing however I am halfway through right now and Louis is 
crusading, lots of crusading here, crusading against someone who just died. It's the um, an Accra and Jerusalem, Louis the Ninth, and Henry the Third. The two of them. So they are. It's all like battle lists of battles and. Um, their ship stayed here for these days. And by the way, Beatrice is was pregnant. They had a second daughter. And oh yeah, by the way, Sancia is pregnant also. And oh yeah, did we mention this one thing? But let me tell you about the battles for like six pages. I, I, I'm not reading a history of the Middle East, a history of Turkey, a history of Egypt, Greece. I'm reading about these four sisters and what their lives were like. So... I'm annoyed that this book is not what it's supposed to be about. Even the blurbs in the back mention how it's great to have this feminist history, but you have to like, I, right now, I was just sort of scanning for one of their names in the text. Cause it's like, you know, blah, blah, battle, bloody, someone died, stabbed here. Oh no, this person died. Oh, someone was pregnant. Oh, but then here's more. So I don't know if I should skim read this to finish. If this is a DNF situation, has anyone else read this? If you have, please, please, please tell me what you think about it because I'm really torn. It's semi-interesting and yes, they are there, but it's not what I thought. So yeah, on the floor with that. Next up is Plant Based on a Budget by Tony Okamoto. I am really trying to make this year really good for me. Um, I. It's natural to me, automatic to take care of other people, and it's automatic to not put myself into equations. I'm really working on that, and I'm really trying to do better. So one of those things is to remember to eat, because I forget to eat all the time. You wouldn't think it, but I do. So I'm trying to make a conscious decision to eat more plant-based, and of course budgeting because really who has money to like do all this crazy stuff but this is really nice like pretty standard recipes that are easily adaptable like uh, personally I have a lot of issues with my endocrine system and I have a lot of issues with hormones and stuff so, like I have to, like I'm supposed to avoid soy as much as possible and soy is like gluten it's kind of in everything so for me some of these recipes like I wouldn't use tempeh bacon. I would just use a slice of bacon. You know what I mean? But I can do much easier stuff. I can make easy substitutions. I'm not a huge meat person in the first place, so it makes more sense for me to get protein from plants and legumes and stuff. So this is really interesting. I've just flipped through quite a bit, read about half, and I am getting ready to make some of the recipes. They seem very doable. I really like this book. It seems really interesting. Next up is Between the World and Me by ta Coates. So I only really know um, Tanahasi from interviews I've seen him do on TV and uh, interviews with magazine articles and stuff like that. And I have seen him on Finding Your Roots with Henry Louis Gates Jr. And I love that show. I love Dr. Gates. Like, oh my God, I love Dr. Gates. He's so smart and so great. I would kill to be on that show. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. So I thought seeing um, his his thing um, two years ago, I think it was, was really interesting too. So I've had this on my living room shelves ever since then. And I am about 30 pages in and what a gut punch. It's so powerful. And to hear specifics of things, I mean, you know, generic things of how, um, how people like him lived, like in Baltimore, in like really big cities, how pockets were, you know, where not to go, you know, if you're a little kid and whose cousin ran this and who you couldn't cross here. And, you know, if someone says, let me see your bike, you just mean you lost your bike, you know, that kind of stuff. So hearing him write to his son, who is 15 at this point, um, and talking about his son growing up and then his youth growing up too is really powerful. So I think this will be another one we'll have to take in chunks and think about it for a while, but really, really good. So good and such a great writer. I am really glad that I am picking this one up. This one, if you have been here since I started, which again, not that long ago, but you know, I am still chipping away at the big chunkster, look at this door stopper, The Age of Wonder by Richard Holmes. This is set um, around the romantic age of science. So it covers um, astronomy, astrology, chemistry, uh, travel, 
Oh, ballooning, which seems like an, like a curve, a weird curve, but it's not. Um, oh yeah, it's a lot of people and it covers a long period of time. A lot of people, get this out clear, are really connected. And you know how if you have Amazon or Amazon Prime, it's, I've seen in magazines too, they're advertising that movie, The Aeronauts, like those characters in that story is in this book. I'm in those chapters right now. Um, so it's fascinating, but it's very slow going. I had it on, as an ebook from the library, which of course got returned and there's a hold. So I, I'm just stuck reading the this copy, but it's really heavy paper. It's um, 400 some pages, but it's dense text, not a ton of margin space, but this is just physically heavy to lift. I mean, I own books that are twice as thick as this that weigh less. So this is just going to be a really slow read. Maybe I'll finish it by November, coming up again for nonfiction November. I don't know. But interesting, fascinating. I can't imagine of another book like this that would encompass everything as well as this does, but it's slow. So there's that. And then the last one is one I just recently started just on a whim. And oh my gosh, it is so good. Destiny of the Republic by Candace Millard. This is about President James Garfield, how he came to be president um, reluctantly. I, he just got elected, that's where I am. So I'm the third through. So it's about him. And at the same time, also about Guiteau, who is the man who will eventually assassinate him. And also about other things going on at the time, like the telephone being invented. So you follow Alexander Graham Bell, you see his life and you're with him off and on throughout. So it's like, it's all chronologically going, you know, it's all linear chronologically speaking, but you jump around between these three men and it's so fascinating. It's so well written. It reads like excellent narrative nonfiction. And I can't believe that a book about politics, which I normally can't stand to read too much, a book about a presidency, which, <laughs> and a book that seems like smarty pantsy for me, I'm actually enjoying. It is going like, it's such smooth reading. It is excellent. I mean, I know Candace Millard has a great reputation and there is a reason why I've had this on my shelves for a long, long time, but I am just surprised and I encourage anyone who has not read this or has any interest in any of this stuff to pick this up. It's a fascinating book and I can't wait to see how it ends aside from, I know everybody's dead now, but you know, yeah, really, really, really good. So that's what I have been reading, nonfiction speaking. Um, what are you guys, have you guys read any of these books? Let me know in the comments. I am trying to get better about getting back to people in a timely fashion and not just like staring out a window for two days instead. So um, let me know what you think. Um, let's have a little conversation. Thank you for joining in, for watching me. And I hope that all of you newbies find something that you like and stick around. So hope you're having good days and reading something wonderful and I will see you soon. Bye.